Okay, so let's continue forward here. Let's take this file and save as version D. E. Now, if you guys, if I get enough subscriptions from this video here, I might be prompted to post these files, but only if I get enough likes on my Facebook page and I get more subscriptions to my site. Now, if you're already subscribed, you're saying, well, you subscribed and I already uh, liked your Facebook, so what's my incentive? Well, your incentive is to tell your friends to subscribe and tell your friends to like my Facebook page, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, I take that back. Don't have your friends subscribe to my, to my site if they're not interested in what I do. I don't want false subscriptions. I want true subscriptions. So that's actually a bad idea. So if you have a friend that wants to learn Dreamweaver, obviously, or any Adobe product, then by all means, subscribe to my site. But don't just have your friends subscribe to my site when they have nothing to do with my videos, because I don't want a bunch of false subscriptions. Every subscription I have are people that watch my videos. So we're going to save this as index version 1e. OK, now let's talk about a few things. Other than the fact that this girl keeps appearing, I don't know where the hell she's coming from. She disappears. Every time I save a file, she appears. I have no idea what's going on. I need to hide the trace image. Okay. Now, let's think about our basic bread and butter CSS rules, which we haven't put on the page yet. So, obviously, I want to have a body tag rule. So I'm going to select the tag, select the tag, and make a rule. Make a body tag rule for the entire site. That's under category tag, and hit OK. So let's change our font family to say Tacoma, Tacoma 16 pixels. Now, obviously, I don't have to change the black because it defaults the black. So for these guys out here that are changing your typeface to black, well, guess what? It defaults the black, so why are you making it black? Don't do redundancies, OK? Body tag is the body tag of the entire site. Okay? Now. Very important step here. We talked about this in a lot of my previous videos here. Okay, I have space up in here. I don't want to have space in here. That's what the asterisk tag does, the universal selector, the wildcard tag. I want to get rid of all the space on my page here. So how do I do this? I get down here to insert CSS rule. I get down here to compound, and I type in the asterisk tag. The asterisk tag is the default setting for every single tag on the page. Okay, it's the default setting for every single tag on the page. We're going to set every tag on the page to a default setting of zero, tab, zero. Okay, make a change, save a change. Now, this is the grandfather tag for the entire site. So, what I want to do here, I think this is a little smaller here, the asterisk tag should be on top. Make a change. Save a change. Okay. Now, wrapper tag, let's do something to our wrapper tag. Wrapper tag has width of 900 pixels. Okay. Wrapper tag, we want to have not smash up to the top of the site here. We want to drop this down, say, a quarter inch. How many pixels are in an inch? There's 72 pixels to an and so I could say 72 divided by 4 equals, for those of you who slept through fourth grade math class, we can make 18 pixels aligned to the right automatically, aligned to the left automatically, and hit the apply option. So this puts it in the center. Now, what I want to do here to make this flexible, if you want to take the same site and make it flexible for an iPhone or iPad, etc., 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 we can change this to 100%. Now, I just want to keep this simple for now. I'm going to keep this at 900%, 900%, 900 pixels for right now. Because that's how big my comp was. My comp was 900 pixels wide. But if I hit the OK button, notice that it puts in the center of my page, and I got rid of my space. Now, when I start to put content on the page here, as an example, paragraph, I do want to have space below my paragraph. So as an example, if you were to put in some type, hit the return key, notice that there's no space between my paragraph because the asterisk tag got rid of that space. Well, guess what? I do want to have space inside my paragraph. So how do I solve this? I go to my create a rule, create a rule for P for paragraph. 
So I select tag, select tag, and type in the letter P. P for paragraph, P for paragraph. I want to create a rule for paragraph. What does it say? CSS rule definition for P. P for paragraph. I'm going to go to the box settings. Margin space is outside the box. We're going to set the, pat the margin space at the bottom of the paragraph to be 1.7 M space. And M is equal to the height of the letter M. Okay, you change, save a change. P for paragraph sheet after the, uh, the body tag. Asterisk tag, body tag, paragraph tag. Okay, so let's create some basic H1 tags. So that's an example. If this is my logo, command key one makes H1. So let's make our logo followed by our catchphrase, which is going to be an H2 tag, command two. So this is my tag line. Okay. So how did I do that? Command key one makes header one. Command key two, header two. Command three, header three. Windows control one through control six. Macintosh command one through command six. Now, of course, I can go down here and do that too. Okay. Header tags are per paragraph. Now, I don't have a header tag rule, an H1 rule. So let's create a rule for the tag. So I'm going to create a rule for the tag. Now, the simplest way to do this is, if you looked at my previous videos, is in order to affect the tag, I need to select the tag. I'm going to select the tag, make a rule. Select the tag, make a rule. Now, I don't want to be specific for this selector. I just want to make a rule for the entire site. So if I have an H1 tag on the entire site, this is what I wanted to do. This is the H1 rule, the entire site. We're going to make this 24 pixels. We're going to make this capitalized, and we're going to make this purple. So those are the rules for the H1 tag. Okay. Here's the H2 tag. The H2 tag. Select the tag. Select the tag. Make a rule. In order to affect the tag, we need to select the tag. We select the tag, make a rule. Make a rule for the selected tag. Make this less specific. We come up here and let's make this, let's make this 20, 20 pixels. Let's make this capitalized and let's keep the color to black. That's fine. Okay, make a change, save a change. Okay, now. If we put an image on the page here, by default, by default, if we put an image on the page, on my site, I want the image to flow to the left. So how do we do this? We go to the tag selector. Tag, we type in the image tag, I-M-G. Now, very important step here, okay? Let's say that I want to not physically hard code the tag itself. In this particular case, I I'm going to hard code the tag itself. So I'm going to say whenever I have an image tag on the page, by default, by default, I'm going to float it to the left. Now, I'm going to show you techniques of using class tags for this too, but by default, I just want my image tag to float to the left. So I'm going to say left float. Now, let's think about this. If it floats to the left, I'd want to have margin space to its right. So to the right, let's put in one point one e m m spaces not pixel spaces m is equal to the height of the letter m okay so once i put the image in here what did that tell me i wasn't paying attention one point one m one point one did i hit the might hit the comma symbol by mistake here Okay, make a change, save a change. Now we're starting to base, now we have our basic CSS rules for the HTML. This is the HTML rules. We haven't created the rules for the div tags yet, with the exception of the wrapper tag. Do that in our next video. Please subscribe, please like, please follow me on Facebook. You've heard the speech before. Thank you.